This is iodine controversy part three, and I'm going to talk about my TSH results and uh, also a little bit about how that affects me in pregnancy because I'm 16 weeks pregnant. Okay, and forgive me if I repeat myself in this video, guys, because this is the fourth, I repeat, fourth time <laughs> that I've tried to do this video. I was going to do a direct upload to YouTube and they're just being, oh my gosh, I can't. Anyway, <clears throat> so. I just got my TSH results and they're 1.4, but first I want to do a little review about iodine basics with you guys, okay? Um, what is TSH? TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone, and it's a hormone that your body makes in order to stimulate your thyroid into making T3 and T4. T3 and T4 require iodine, um, and so the iodine controversy exists partly because of the way it affects your thyroid, but also because there's new studies showing that it has some amazing uh, results going on. Like, for example, iodine may or may not be able to prevent, excuse me, FDA, for saying that something in nature can prevent a disease, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, people who intake more iodine have lower incidence of breast cancer, prostate cancer, fibrocystic breast disease, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. But some people who intake too much iodine, such as in Japan, which is where this other uh, lower incidence of breast and prostate cancer occur, some of them actually do get an induced autoimmune hypothyroid state, which is low functioning thyroid. Well, those people though, according to studies, when they restrict their iodine intake, it resolves itself, um, and in China, and in, excuse me, in Japan, um, you know they have the miso soup with seaweed and tofu. Well, seaweed ha is full of iodine, which will stimulate your thyroid, and tofu is full of soy, which has goitrogens that will block your thyroid. And so I wonder if that's some sort of ancient wisdom of balancing that yin and that yang. I don't know. But uh, so perhaps the people who are getting this autoimmune are skipping the miso, <clears throat> and I mean skipping the tofu in their miso soup. So back to uh, my issues, I kind of put myself through this experiment, and it's not very scientific, okay, but I know there are people out there that are taking high amounts of iodine, and so I kind of am just putting myself out there to help you in your journey. Two and a half years ago, it was 2.03. I had not taken any iodine. I didn't really know about iodine. 13 years ago, I had just finished weaning myself off of Zoloft, which is a fluoridated medication. So let's go back and review a little bit more about iodine before I get into me. Fluoride, bromine, and chlorine, and iodine are all halogens on the periodic table. They're all in the same column. And they compete in your body. Well, bromine is just chock full. I mean, bromine is just all up in our pastries. So if you eat bread, brominated flour and pastries and all that, then you're getting bromine, which can uh, supposedly lead to acne among other problems. Chlorine, of course, is in our water. Fluoride is in our water. Medications are full of fluoride. A lot of medications like antibiotics, like Cipro, which I actually am allergic to, how ironic, is a fluoridated medication. And Zoloft, I believe the antidepressant that I had just weaned myself off of was a fluoridated medication. I find it ironic that antidepressants are often made out of fluoride because fluoride goes in and zaps certain parts of your brain. But that's another controversy to talk about. So anyway, I think my body is, is probably full of fluoride, fluoride and maybe bromine too. I even swam in a brominated indoor pool when I lived in LA, LA Fitness, so I'm sure that was great for me. But um, anyway, um, I struggle with acne. I struggled with cold feet, dry skin, depression, dry brittle hair, and eventually cysts in my breasts that were painful, um, especially around the time of my period. They would subside, the pain would subside 
in the middle of my cycle and come back. And the doctor was like, yeah, every woman has that, especially once they get to your age because I'm in my 30s now. Well, it wasn't normal for me, and <laughs> I was concerned, you know. Um, here I am talking about health all the time, and I have, like, you know, painful lumps in my breasts. Who am I? So I finally gave in somewhere between nine months, somewhere around nine months ago. Let's see. Yeah, I think it was, like, at least the beginning of the year, if not before, January, February, or if not before, and started taking Lugol's 2% iodine, which is a combination of iodine and iodides, two different forms. Um, I was taking above the upper limit because I read that while, yes, it can induce an autoimmune hypothyroid state, you can take higher amounts for a short period of time, just not prolonged. Okay, that's what I had read according to a study. And even if you did take too much for too long, according to these people in Japan and other places, the autoimmuneness would disappear once they restricted their iodine again. It wasn't a permanent damage kind of thing. And so I was trying to get rid of the painful lumps in my breast, and I was trying to increase my fertility as well. We've been trying to get pregnant for two and a half years. And I had read that some people believe it could be bacteria. Well, I knew I didn't have a disease. I mean, they test you for that, but they don't test you for every bacteria under the sun. And so I thought that's possible. Well, iodine is also antimicrobial. So it's really a great nutrient to have in your diet. But because of the fluoride in the water, and we didn't have our RO machine until the last like year or so. So we were actually drinking fluoridated water back when my TSH was 2.0. Um, so because of all this crud that we're intaking that pushes off the iodine, and of course a lack of iodine in America, um, they don't iodize salt anymore. And I've noticed that some fast food places like Five Guys, they have iodized salt, but they also add aluminum. Like, oh, thanks, Five Guys. Appreciate it. Aluminum. Thanks. Anyway, so there's an issue here. Whereas in Japan, where they consume a lot of seaweed, they do have some of the autoimmune, but they have lower breast cancer and lower prostate cancer and other issues and fibrocystic breast disease. And, and they live like a long time. And they're smart, too. Because iodine can increase your IQ, which makes sense because fluoride lowers your IQ and iodine goes in and can replace the fluoride. So um, when I took it, several things happened. The only negative side effect, well, there, there were two possible negative side effects. The first negative side effect was increase in acne, like blazam, okay? Like, always had it here, always, but it blew up. I mean, it just blew up. <laughs> But this acne here can be, there's a million internet rumors about what causes it. Hormonal imbalances, if women have it around their chin. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Uh, excess of fluoride called fluoroderma. Excess of bromine. Okay, well all four of those can tie back to iodine. Because iodine is antimicrobial, so that'll help with the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Iodine also increases the production of certain hormones. Um, often women who go through a uh, procedure called a hysterosphingelogram, it's called an HSG, um, which is a procedure that actually injects iodine into their uterus all the way into their fallopian tubes until it spills out the ovaries. So they're literally getting an iodine soak. And they do this in order to see if there's any blockages on the x-ray. But often, women get pregnant after that, even if there are no blockages. Well, they just got their female organs soaked in iodine. So, I mean, your ovaries produce testosterone and stuff and estrogen. So, anyway, um, the whole infertility thing related to bacteria, iodine is antimicrobial, acne related to bacteria, iodine is antimicrobial, hormones, it just affects all that. Painful breasts, you know, all of that is iodine related. So my, so my acne did explode, but other than that, my feet got warm, my skin got less dry, my hair started growing. Like you'll notice a couple years ago, my hair was like this short and it was frizzier. Now it's less dry and, and uh, it's pretty awesome. My eyebrows thickened up, cool stuff is happening. 
So now when we moved, um, when we moved to Texas, June, we left like June 5th, but then we got here like June 10th and we stayed in a hotel. No, we got here like June 9th and we stayed in a hotel for like two weeks. We were eating out. I started increasing my iodine while we were in the hotel. Um, and I did start getting puffy eyes and puffy fingers only while we were in the hotel. And I wasn't taking really any more iodine than I was back in Florida, but I had taken like several drops a day and then kind of tapered off. And then when we were in the hotel and I was drinking like restaurant water and eating out, I was worried about the fluorides and the bromines. And so I increased it to several drops a day again. Well, the puffy eyes and the puffy fingers can be a symptom of too much iodine. But I don't know, because it hadn't done that before, if it was from that or if it was from an allergic reaction to the hotel room because, and this does tie back to iodine, I promise, there is something that, besides fluoride and bromine and chlorine and, and other halogens, besides those causing an increase in your TSH, which is a sign of hypothyroidism, another couple of things that can cause an increase in your TSH is allergies. So like if you are, if you have a food allergy that's undiagnosed or that you're not follow, you're not properly avoiding, um, those proteins get in your blood, cause inflammation, and that can make your thyroid function lower and then it causes an increase in TSH. Or if you have an exposure to a chemical that you're allergic to, that can cause an increase. And I had that. What I found out upon leaving that hotel, it was the day we were leaving, we took my dog to our house, we came back to get our things, and we walked into a fogger, because their policy was, if you had a pet in the hotel, to fog every time they leave. Well, they didn't bother to see if we had left, and they didn't notice our luggage on the floor. Well, foggers, pesticide foggers, are made with pyrethrins. Pyrethrins come from the daisy family, chrysanthemums specifically, and I am allergic to the daisy family, burdock, uh, dandelion, all that. So I got gassed with a chemical that I'm allergic to. It also, these foggers are pyrethrins and permethrins, and permethrins are a synthetic version of pyrethrins, which are even worse and can cause neurological problems. So thank goodness I wasn't pregnant at the time. I didn't get pregnant until two months later. Thank heavens, and hopefully my baby's not going to be negatively affected by that, because I was. So my second iodine test, which I got in July, a month after I got, it was like two, three weeks after I got fogged, <clears throat> well, my TSH was 2.53, so it had actually gone up, but my eosinophils were also elevated above normal, which eosinophils show an allergic reaction. So... Did my TSH elevate because I was taking too much iodine and induced hypothyroidism? Were my eyes puffy because I was taking too much iodine or was, was it an allergic reaction? So my elevated TSH and my puffy eyes and puffy hands, which only happened in the hotel, could have been from these pyrethrins because it fogged the whole room, the bed, the everything. And I'm sure they had done it before. And so I can't tell you that unfortunately. Um, but the fact that my eosinophils were also elevated tells me that is an allergy. Okay. Now, I just got tested two days ago. I am 16 weeks pregnant as of yesterday. And it was 1.4. Now, the reason that that is significant is because when you're pregnant, your TSH usually goes up, not down. It's good that it went down because if I'm pregnant and it goes over 3.0, they're going to want to medicate me with pig thyroid, which I would not take because I'm kosher. So porcine products are a no-go for me. And synthetic chemicals are a no-go for me unless it's life or death. So I'm very happy that it went down. Now, I haven't been exposed to extreme allergies. So what really is going on? Is my TSH lower? You know, why? Now, the first eight weeks of my pregnancy, I didn't take iodine. So once again, it could be from not being fogged or from not taking iodine. And I'm sorry, I'm not more scientific. But as far as pregnancy goes, the reason I stopped is because 
when you're pregnant and you have a developing fetus, this is just from what I'm read, I've read, if you don't have enough iodine in your body, your baby can have cretinism, which is basically severe mental retardation. If you have too much iodine, it can actually cause the same thing. And I had been taking so much that I just put it away. My husband got stationed in Afghanistan. I sent it with him. I said, they're going to give you tons of fluoride and bromine. Take it with you and please take a drop a day. So I didn't have any and I was kind of nervous about it. Now, a couple weeks ago, I looked. The upper limit for pregnant women my age is 1,100 micrograms per day. And my midwife, actually, she was all pro-iodine. Because she reminded me that the upper limit does not take into account your diet. It only takes into account supplementation. So even if you're eating 800 micrograms a day with eggs and raw milk and potatoes or and seaweed, upper limit only considers supplementation. So I got the detoxidine nation iodine, which is not a combination of iodine and iodides. That is just iodides, I believe. And it's sold by Global Healing Center. I do think it's overpriced, probably because of all the iodine hype more than anything. And Lugol's is probably what I would buy next time again. But I took like a drop a day for a few days before she came and gave me this test. And it was 1.4. So I was really happy with that. She encouraged me to, um, that I didn't have to be so careful with it. The Global Healing Center on, on their package it recommends three drops a day. But I didn't do that because the upper limit is 1,100, and three drops a day of that particular product would be almost 1,500. So I'm going to try two drops a day, and I'm going to try to stick with it. One to two drops a day. Um, and I'm going to try to stick with that and retest yet again in three months. So in March, which will be like two months before my baby's born and see how it goes and get back to you. And I'm sorry I rambled on for so long, but there's so many things that you should take into account. Like your diet, it does affect you. And exercise can actually slightly increase it as well, um, but it's not gonna be like a permanent, I think it might be for like a day after you exercise, your TSH might be up. So I hope I covered all my bases and um, the one guy who contacted me who's doing a study, I hope this helps you. But I am very happy that I'm, um, my TSH is lower. And so one thing to keep in mind is no matter what caused it to initially increase and no matter what caused it to drop, the important thing to note is I was taking a lot of iodine and then I stopped and it went and it did drop. So even if the iodine caused that, then these reports that if it does give you hypothyroidism, it'll resolve itself seem in my case to be true. If it wasn't the iodine causing that, then that's even better. Um, maybe the iodine is the cause of it dropping, my TSH dropping, I don't know. But overall, just in the last few week or so of taking the one or two drops a day, my feet are no longer cold, my skin is not as dry. So you've got to take into account how I feel, not just my TSH. And remember, when that TSH was higher, after I got fogged, I felt that my feet were warm, warm. These painful lumps that I had months ago are gone. I am pregnant, okay guys? I am pregnant. My breasts are supposed to hurt all the time and they don't hurt as much as they did a year ago before I started taking iodine. So there's the iodine controversy part three. Oh, anyway, and uh, I'm gonna cover this up, but I'm just, cause this is my college sweatshirt. I'm just gonna say go Knowles. Number one right now, win the championship. They taught me chemistry, and in case you were wondering where I learned all my biology and physiology and chemistry, it was Florida State University chemistry department. And the sciences there are amazing, not just the football. Have a great day. Bye.